Chapter 14 of The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Action at Home Do not merely think that you are going to become great. Think that you are great now. Do not think that you will begin to act in a great way at some future time. Begin now. Do not think that you will act in a great way when you reach a different environment. Act in a great way where you are now. Do not think that you will begin to act in a great way when you begin to deal with great things. Begin to deal in a great way with small things. Do not think that you will begin to be great when you get among more intelligent people or among people who understand you better. Begin now to deal in a great way with the people around you. If you are not in an environment where there is scope for your best powers and talents, you can move in due time. But meanwhile, you can be great where you are. Lincoln was as great when he was a backwoods lawyer as when he was president. As a backwoods lawyer, he did common things in a great way, and that made him president. Had he waited until he reached Washington to begin to be great, he would have remained unknown. You are not made great by the location in which you happen to be, nor by the things with which you may surround yourself. You are not made great by what you receive from others, and you can never manifest greatness so long as you depend on others. You will manifest greatness only when you begin to stand alone. Dismiss all thought of reliance on externals, whether things, books, or people. As Emerson said, Shakespeare will never be made by the study of Shakespeare. Shakespeare will be made by the thinking of Shakespearean thoughts. Never mind how the people around you, including those of your own household, may treat you. That has nothing at all to do with your being great. That is, it cannot hinder you from being great. People may neglect you, and be unthankful and unkind in their attitude toward you. Does that prevent you from being great in your manner and attitude toward them? Your father, said Jesus, is kind to the unthankful and the evil. Would God be great if he should go away and sulk because people were unthankful and did not appreciate him? Treat the unthankful and the evil in a great and perfectly kind way, just as God does. Do not talk about your greatness. You are really, in essential nature, no greater than those around you. You may have entered upon a way of living and thinking which they have not yet found, but they are perfect on their own plane of thought and action. You are entitled to no special honor or consideration for your greatness. You are a god, but you are among gods. You will fall into the boastful attitude if you see other people's shortcomings and failures, and compare them with your own virtues and successes. And if you fall into the boastful attitude of mind, you will cease to be great and become small. Think of yourself as a perfect being among perfect beings, and meet every person as an equal, not as either superior or an inferior. Give yourself no airs, great people never do. Ask no honors and seek no recognition. Honors and recognition will come fast enough if you are entitled to them. Begin at home. It is a great person who can always be poised, assured, calm, and perfectly kind and considerate at home. If your manner and attitude in your own family are always the best you can think of, you will soon become the one on whom all the others will rely. You will be a tower of strength and a support in time of trouble. You will be loved and appreciated. At the same time, do not make the mistake of throwing yourself away in the service of others. The great person respects himself. He serves and helps, but he is never slavishly servile. You cannot help your family by being a slave to them, or by doing for them those things that by right they should do for themselves. You do a person an injury when you wait on him too much. The selfish and exacting are a great deal better off if their exactions are denied. The ideal world is not one where there are a lot of people being waited on by other people. It is a world where everybody waits on himself. Meet all demands, selfish and otherwise, with perfect kindness and consideration. But do not allow yourself to be made a slave to the whims, caprices, exactions or slavish desires of any member of your family. To do so is not great and it works an injury to the other party. Do not become uneasy over the failures or mistakes of any member of your family and feel that you must interfere. Do not be disturbed if others seem to be going wrong and feel that you must step in and set them right. Remember that every person is perfect in his own plane. You cannot
cannot improve on the work of God. Do not meddle with the personal habits and practices of others, though they are your nearest and dearest. These things are none of your business. Nothing can be wrong but your own personal attitude. Make that right, and you will know that all else is right. You are a truly great soul when you can live with those who do things that you do not do, and yet refrain from either criticism or interference. Do the things that are right for you to do, and believe that every member of your family is doing the things that are right for him. Nothing is wrong with anybody or anything. Behold, it is all very good. Do not be enslaved by anyone else, but be just as careful that you do not enslave anyone else to your own notions of what is right. Think, and think deeply and continuously. Be perfect in your kindness and consideration. Let your attitude be that of a god among gods, and not that of a god among inferior beings. This is the way to be great in your own home. End of chapter 14